another fabulous day that we're going to work on. Ting Point Day! These are very, very powerful because they're the beginning and the ends of all the meridians that are in the body. And they're very, they're very, like I said, they're very powerful. Yeah, they, there's a lot of practitioners that literally all they do is work on ting points and they get amazing results. And the other thing is it stimulates the foot quite a bit. So it does more than just point work. So that's why we're so excited about giving this to you and having you guys do it. Yeah, and this is something that we have in our book and we've taught in our classes, but we really haven't spent much time talking about team points. And it's actually one of the very first things that we implemented when we became practitioners was team point therapy. And so we're super excited for you guys to jump into this. So let's go. Now we're gonna take a look at the ting points themselves on a horse. Um, they're on all four feet. Six of the meridians are on one side, six of the meridians on the other side. This is the beginning and the ending of all the meridians. So the meridians come from one area, comes down, comes back out, and it all uh, ranges from the ting points. So we're gonna look at the front foot itself. So when we look at the foot, you can kind of see about an inch above the hairline there's an area where it indents around the foot. Now the ting points themselves are located like if you were to take a pie, and if I had a circle of a pie here, and I drew a line down the center, I drew a line and break this into six points, or six pie shapes, they're located at each one of where that would intersect the circle. So if we did that, if we came down the front, about an inch up, we're going to find our front point of the horse, and then the back one is in the middle of the bulbs themselves. And now we're going to put this at a diagonal, so we'd find the two diagonal points that are in the front, and then directly across from here, if you were running your line across, would be the back one, and the back one on the other side, I'll draw them over here, so you have here, here, here and then the same on the opposite side. And what you're going to do, and I'm not going to get into all the names of each ting point at this time because you can look them up in the book and I'm not going to, and I don't want to confuse you guys, is you're going to draw your finger down where that point is and you're going to feel, without pushing, you're going to feel if it feels just flat or if it feels like it's convexed or concaved. Typically what you'll find is it's concaved, which means that it's a deficiency in the meridian. So I'm just gonna come over and say, that one's pretty flat. This one's actually protruding out. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. And that one's a little bit flat. Now the back one, you can't tell because that's just in the, in, in the bulb, so it's just there. So when we're red lighting these, so you're gonna red light, if you find even one that's wrong, I recommend doing all the ting points on that foot and uh, going around. And what I like to do, if you only have one light, you're just gonna do one at a time. If you have two lights, all right, the gold light is what's gonna be more powerful. I like using the gold on high our Pro Gen 2 light on high on the back and standard on the front. So I'm gonna put them on. So I'll put this on high. And the way I would do is I put one on the back and I put one on the front. That makes it go much, much faster. And we're only gonna sit here about 10 to 15 seconds. I'm gonna stay for five just for now. And then you're gonna do cross. And then the opposite the other way. And then if you wanna go, you could do the opposite. You could do the next foot. That's the easiest way to get them done. You can just do them one at a time going around. But the reason that we want the Pro Gen 2 on high is the back of the foot is doing more than just stimulating the point. It's stimulating the cartilage and the bone. So you want to stimulate that cartilage with light because the whole back of a horse's foot has no bone in it. It is just cartilage. So that's what you want to use. So on the back foot, it's going to be very similar when you're doing the ting points as the front foot. So again, it's about an inch above the hairline in this groove that you feel around. Same way of cutting it into the pie shape. So we're going to put the front one on, and then we put one in the back of the bulb, and we'll show you that. So when we're looking at the back of the foot, we're looking at right in the hole of the bulbs is where that would be. So this is pericardium. Then I'm going to go at a diagonal, 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 
diagonal. So I'll do it also on this foot. And you'll get used to doing this. Now, you are on the back foot of a horse, so you have to be a little more careful. So you wanna make sure that you're doing your light work without having any, putting yourself in any harm's way. So you're gonna put the Progen 2 on high in the back or just using one light, you just put use one light, put the other one in front and you always oppose each other. And I kind of put my hand against the horse so I can have the leg here so in case they react at all. Then you're gonna do a cross diagonal. And then cross diagonal. And again, you're gonna feel the same way. You're gonna feel down for the point to see if it feels flat or if it feels like it's deficient. These two feel deficient to me, and those are concaved in. That one's fine, that one's fine. And so, let's talk about tink points after we red light them. Now, meridians and points sometimes can take up to 24 hours before they really make a difference. Because of where the tink points are at, you may not feel a change in what the uh, uh, deficiency is or anything right away. Sometimes you will, but a lot of times it's the next day. So when you come back and recheck, you'll see a problem. You're gonna be looking for things like she's doing right now where she's licking and chewing, or they pass gas, or they just breathe out, or they become very, very relaxed. Those are things we're looking for for the tink points. What is equine colic? Equine colic is a very distressing condition characterized by abdominal pain, often caused by digestive system disturbances, such as gas, spasm, bloating, or impaction. Early symptom recognition is absolutely crucial for prompt and effective intervention.